Hey everyone, so today I want to talk about my top regrets as a physics student. Now, I did get an undergrad degree in physics and I started my PhD in physics as well and honestly I love the experience and I have no regrets getting the physics degree. However, I do think there are a couple things I could have done better and I could have utilized my time in college and in grad school a lot better than I did and built more confidence in myself to get more out of the experience. And even though I was a physics student, I do think this can actually apply to a lot of college students because some of it was just learning how to transition into that environment or for people that want to go into research, especially to STEM people. I think this video may help some of you as well. And especially if you want to apply for grad school, that's a big one. My number one regret is not going to office hours. Now, office hours are there for you to learn. And honestly, when I talk to a bunch of professors after I got to know them over the years, they say very often they're alone in office hours. And honestly, one of the things I was afraid of is I was afraid of feeling stupid and going to the office hours and asking stupid questions or having to ask that in front of a lot of other people. But honestly, especially when I got to the upper level classes, professors just sat there for a couple hours a couple times a week and that was it nobody actually came by and that's a huge miss that's an amazing resource that you can utilize i mean the professor there is one of the experts in the field probably and they're doing it for free you're not even paying well you know besides paying for college but you're not paying extra money for a tutor and they know exactly where you're getting stuck on they've probably taught that class a couple other times before and they can really help you through exactly what you need to know for the class now, another fear that some students have is that the professor may make fun of them or be mean to them because they don't understand a certain thing, and certainly that can actually really happen. I actually dropped a class once because the professor was super mean and I just didn't want to deal with that and I ended up taking it the next semester. Luckily, it was an elective class, so I didn't need to move my schedule around or graduate later for it, but that was a really bad experience. And honestly, definitely that can happen, but don't knock it before you try it. I think one of the things that when professors get frustrated in office hours is when you go in and you just say, I don't get it. Just saying I don't get it is not really good because it seems like you're maybe just looking for the right answer and asking them to walk you through everything. The better thing is to come into the office hours and go, hey, I was working on this homework problem and I tried this, I tried this, I don't fully understand this. And then that shows the professor, you're actually caring. You actually want to learn. My second regret is not taking more math and computer science classes. Now, physics may not always teach you the most useful, actionable skills for your future resume. And again, I don't regret getting the physics degree. I think it really taught me how to think, and that's been super valuable. But I did struggle a little bit out of school trying to get a job because I kind of knew how to code, but I couldn't pass a coding interview. I kind of knew how to do electronics, but I wasn't that deep into electrical engineering. I didn't have data structures and algorithms or kind of the deep knowledge to really get a CS degree. So I ended up going into kind of half technical, half business roles where I could utilize some of the actual thinking skills that I had. So I wish I'd spend more time doing that. So I always thought I would go to graduate school, so I didn't really need those computer science skills, but everyone needs computer science skills nowadays. And if I known what I'd known then that I would drop out of graduate school and go into industry, yes, definitely, I would do more CS classes. And if you can't fit that into your schedule, see if you can do it extracurricularly. So actually I was in the robotics club all through high school and we had it in college as well. I ended up dropping that because I was doing a lot of research and I think that was the right idea, but I could have still done more robotics in my free time. And I really wish I did because it would have built some more of those skills and actually been really fun through the process. And of course, math skills, math skills. I mean, you gotta have them. I know they're kind of hard to keep around, but I, I was doing some matrix math recently and I just completely blanked and made such a stupid mistake. I knew how to do it before. I took a lot of linear algebra, but I still wish I'd taken more because then it's easier to get back into the math skills. Eventually, as I started my job in software engineering, I had to do a lot more math classes on my own. I had to take graph theory, I had to take a lot of other things, and doing that in college would have been really nice to have that background because then it's easier to do it on your own later. And to follow on that, point number three is I actually regret not taking more humanities courses. And let me tell you, I never thought I would say this. Actually, I love the fact that my university, I went to Georgia Tech, didn't require us to basically take anything besides the basics. It's like, can you speak English, do English one and two, do the minimum requirement of liberal arts and you're done. 
The problem is though, I feel like there were a lot of things I could have learned and actually had fun with and actually applied that to my jobs later on. I don't think a lot of people realize how important communication skills are when you're in industry. So I wish I'd taken more writing courses, for example. I mean, I have to write a lot nowadays, even in industry, you know, you're, you're doing reports and stuff like that, but also blog posts, technical papers, if you're staying in grad school, you have to learn how to communicate there. Also, I wish we'd had a public speaking course because my university didn't focus on it. We didn't really have any humanities, liberal arts majors at all. We just didn't even have those courses. Like, I wish we had a course on public speaking and part of the reason of making this YouTube channel was to get better at speaking. I am not naturally good at that. How to structure arguments. These are all such good skills or even how to take a language. I did take French a little bit through college, but I took up to the required level and stopped after that. And I progressed really quickly in my career because I started doing these blog posts and YouTube and communication things because that's actually what's gonna get you to the next level, especially senior level in engineering or above that. You are not as focused on the technical side. Of course, you have to be good at it, but the addition of being a senior engineer, for example, is mentoring other people and being able to communicate properly to product managers, to executives, to your own team what to do. And these are skills that I don't think people focus on as much in college. Another thing I regret is actually not speaking up in class more. And you know, there's always a kid in physics one who's always at the front of the room, raising their hand, trying to seem smarter than when they are. I don't mean that, I, I don't wanna be that person, but I wish I'd been confident enough, especially when I was in my first year of college to raise my hands and say, no, I actually don't understand this, you know? And a lot of people don't realize that a lot of people are in your same position. And again, this continues out throughout your job. If your boss tells you to do a task and you don't fully understand the requirements, well, you need to be confident to actually speak up and ask the question and say, I don't fully understand, here are the pieces, you know, tell me a little bit more and I wish I'd done that more and I wish I hadn't struggled through studying on my own when I could have actually just asked the question in class and probably benefited myself and a lot of other people. Another regret that I have is trying to do more things to seem more impressive or to boost up my resume instead of focusing on one thing. Now, I actually kind of did this halfway. So I did work in the same research lab for three years actually, and focused on working on one project within it and continued on and started a different project, but I was still in the same lab with the same lab group and I really learned a lot. And actually, I think that was the reason I got the fellowship when I went to graduate school. So my graduate school had one fellowship per year for one student where instead of having to work and actually RA or TA for your stipend, I actually got the fellowship full out with, you know, no, no other strings attached. And I think it's entirely because of my research experience and concentrated in one area. Because it seems like my GPA was actually the lowest out of everyone who was in my group that year. I talked to a few people and they came in with like 3.8s, 3.9s. And while Georgia Tech does grade deflate, you know, it still didn't feel good. And having one of the lower GPAs in the class and still getting the fellowship, I think it talked a lot about how much graduate school is really about research and the fact that it was my research experience that was really interesting to them. If you go deep in one thing, that's much better than working in like three or four different lab groups and just getting to the surface level. I was able to show the experiments and what I'd done over the years and really talk about building things from scratch, which a lot of people aren't able to do. And these skills end up applying in your career too. So for example, when you have a lot of work to do, you need to figure out how to prioritize those things and get deeper into them. And I think this really applies to careers too. So there's a ton of stuff you could be doing, right? But what are the most high value things for you to be doing? You know, especially at the beginning, as you're kind of learning in software engineering, you wanna be really good at your specific thing and then you go broader, right? And really think about it, is everything that you're doing actually giving you value? So my example was my research group and robotics. Those are my favorite things, but you know, trying to do way too many lab groups or extracurriculars, like, are you actually getting that value out of it? You know, in high school, a lot of kids talk about adding to their resume, you know, volunteer experience, X, Y, Z, but it's more impressive to see one person concentrate in one field and be really passionate about it than just surface level on a lot of things. 
And another one of my regrets, and this goes back to the first point, is not asking more questions and trying to seem smarter than I was. And I understand there's a lot of pressure in college from that. People are really competitive and don't want to seem dumb. And again, there's a lot of people surrounding you, you know, that they may not get it either, but they're not showing it. And I think that really causes people to just try and kind of posture. And again, this is something else that's really important in your career later on. A lot of careers these days, especially in tech, are all about continuous learning. And if you don't learn how to get over that and ask more questions and not posture, you're going to fall behind. I've seen this happening in my job before and in school where people say, oh yeah, yeah, they start throwing out some buzzwords to try and seem smarter than they are, but they don't actually understand. And in the end, that's going to affect your grades or your career because you're not gonna move as fast as those people that can actually ask the question. You're not gonna mess up as much. And depending on your learning style, of course, you know, there's some value in, of course, going through things yourself and digging through things yourself. I mean, I'm still more on the side of not asking questions and i really like to get hands-on and dig deep in code and figure out how it works but there's some things that when you're stuck you need to go ask that question and going back to how i talked about office hours as well it's the same thing there right it's not bad to ask a question it's bad to ask a question when you haven't done the work already so you know, going to the professor and saying, I don't get it, you know, you know, what do you, what do you want me to tell you? But if you've done the work, you've done the research, you're kind of not understanding certain pieces, that's a really valuable time to ask the question. And, you know, trying to seem smarter than what you are, I mean, it may make you feel good in the short term, um, but it's just not a good thing for your growth in the end. And yeah, of course, when I asked those questions, I was shamed by sometimes even professors, but most commonly students or something like that. Saying I don't know is such a powerful thing. It really doesn't matter what other people think because you know, if you ask the question, but they make fun of you for asking that question and seeming dumb, but you actually learn it and you get the higher grade later on, well, who's actually winning, right? I think it's a lot of just internal things that we really have to get over here. I've actually been reading this book called Rejection Therapy, which I think is really good. And it talks about the sort of social shaming. And of course it doesn't feel good, you know, as humans, we wanna be part of our group and be accepted. But if that's gonna stunt your growth, it's just not worth it. You should really ask questions. You're paying so much money to go to college. If you're in the US, of course, you know, some of you are not, but you know, we have to pay a lot of money to go to college. Get your money's worth out of it. That's what the professors are there for. Take the classes that are gonna give you the most value and ask questions. Another regret that I have is actually not collaborating more with students. So I was very shy at the beginning and this, a lot of people don't believe me, but I'm a super introvert and you know, being the only woman in the physics class made me feel a little bit awkward and nobody would really sit next to me ever. So I didn't have a lot of people to study with when I was in my physics major and I really regret not taking the time earlier to actually introduce myself to more people and actually work with them. So you see my conclusion here. I think a lot of these tips just focus on being really true to yourself and your values and the knowledge you want to gain. And I know that's asking a lot of people that are in college because like I mentioned, I thought I wanted to be a professor. I thought I wanted to gra do grad school, but I don't regret doing the things that I did to get to the place to be good at grad school, even though I didn't finish it. Having that vision and knowing what you want to do and building towards it and not caring really what other people think or all this kind of social pressures I think college is full of made me a better researcher and made me more kind to other people and honestly opened a lot of doors for me. Going to office hours means that you're gonna to talk to the professors more, learn more about their research. Maybe you can get a research position with them if you understand this, if they see that you're really trying to learn and get interested in this topic. And again, the only failure is if you don't stay and actually do what you wanna do and grow in the way that you wanna grow. Collaboration is so important both in school and in real life. There's nobody that's an island. So one of my actual biggest views on this happened after my grad advisor or sorry my undergrad advisor kind of got into fights with a lot of other professors in the department and I saw how much our research kind of could have gone better if we were on better terms with other people in the department and just because you're studying with other people doesn't mean you're cheating I mean look at your honor code right honor code you can't copy work but there's nothing against actually collaborating and figuring out the questions and it was so valuable to me so I finally started introducing myself to people in my third year 
and it was just amazing. It, I learned things so much faster. I learned ways people approached problems differently. And it, it just, it changed my life, honestly, in the physics department. Physicists are not the most extroverted bunch, so sometimes it took a little while to make a few friends in the class, but when I did, it was amazing. And in grad school, that continued on. I made friends in my math methods class the first day, and they all lived in one house. And honestly, I'd be over there like three, four days a week. We'd all hang out, we'd do our homework together, and we learned so much from each other. I mean, I felt like I was stronger in the experimental side because I did a lot of research, so I was able to tell them a little bit more about how to get research positions and introduce them to some topics that I was doing and others would be interested in other fields. And yeah, we'd all do the homework together. Again, not cheating. We just kind of work through the problems together. And it was so mind-opening and eye-opening and I wish I'd started that earlier.